So I'm going to start recording. Welcome. My name is Judy Miller, and I do some of the basic training webinars. And today is the best webinar of all because it goes over the campaign builder, and I'm going to show you how to build out a simple campaign and automate your marketing. So this webinar is for people that are brand new to Infusionsoft or people have had it for a while and haven't used it or haven't delved into the campaign builder. If you've already been in the campaign builder and built these huge, huge, complex campaigns, this probably isn't the webinar for you because you'll probably be a little bit bored. But I do try to make it fun, so buckle your seatbelt and welcome to the Campaign Builder Basics. By the end of this webinar, you'll be able to create a lead capture campaign. So that's what we're going to create today. Create a web form. You guys may know it as a Contact Us form or a Sign Up form or a Registration form. Infusionsoft calls it a web form. We're going to learn how to create a sequence. You're going to understand how a simple campaign works, and I'm going to show you how to get campaigns for free. And if anyone knows me by now, you know that I love to give you things for free and ideas for free. So I tried to make a little beach theme going on here because it is going to be 118 today in Arizona. Um, my air conditioning broke in my car, if you can believe that. Last week it was in my house. And so it's a little bit hot, so the beach theme will make us feel like we're at the pool. With your Infusionsoft application, you do have access to our help center at help.infusionsoft.com. And there you'll have access to our user guide, access to our tech support numbers and how to get a hold of our tech support, and also access to more self-help learning. So if you go into our help center and click on the webinar tab, you can see mastermind webinars on how to set up e-commerce, how to automate your workflow, um, how to organize your tags. There's lots and lots of videos on our help center and you just have to do a search for it or click on the webinar tab and go into the mastermind section. So coming your way, I'm going to be sending you this. This is a technical writing that one of our software experts made. She's now a, a partner coach instead of a software expert. She's still an expert in our software, though. Her name is Jill, and she created this great technical document that goes over everything that you need to know about the campaign builder with an arrow and an explanation. It's awesome. I'm going to be sending you that with your goodies that I'm going to be sending you with the recording. And it's awesome, amazing, and I'm sure you'll use it more than anything else that you use inside Infusionsoft. So with your Infusionsoft campaign builder, there are two main ingredients that you need to know in order to build a campaign. And I know that that sounds very, very simple. But it is. When you're baking, you need sugar or flour and egg, something to hold it together. With Infusionsoft, there's just two ingredients to make a campaign. And the first ingredient is a goal. And a goal is what you want the contact to do. So every campaign starts with a goal, and a goal is what you want the contact to do. It's what you want them to achieve. It's represented by a circle inside the campaign builder and looks kind of like a beach ball since we're going with the, the beach theme. I'm going to relate everything to either a recipe or the beach. A goal is what you want your contact to do. And you can see we have lots of goals. There's a web form is submitted, a landing page is submitted, a tag is applied to a record, a link is clicked, a product is purchased, web automation page, somebody went to your website and, and was on a page on your website. There's lots of different goals inside of the Infusionsoft toolbar. Today we're going to focus on the web form is submitted or a form that you can use on your website, in an email, in a direct mailer, or also you can use the link on Facebook in a Facebook ad. So that's the goal that we're going to focus on today. In the document that I'm sending you that Jill created, it goes over each one of these goals and what they do. If you go to our Help Center and type in Campaign Goals, there will be some information on what each one of those goals does. Today we're going to focus on the web form. The second ingredient is a sequence. And when that goal is achieved, Infusionsoft will automatically push that contact into a sequence. There's a goal. When the goal is achieved, it pushes that contact automatically into a sequence. Our sequence is represented by a rectangle, or with our beach theme, it kind of looks like a beach towel. I hope that made you smile. There's lots of different things that you can do in a sequence. I like to say that the sequence is the magic that creates automation inside Infusionsoft. The sequence is where all the magic happens. In a sequence, you can send an email. You can add a timer. You can automatically send another email a few days later, put in another timer for a few days later, 
and then create a task to remind yourself or somebody else in your team to do something. So you can create all that automation by using those tools inside that sequence. So believe it or not, there are two major ingredients for the campaign. A goal connects to a sequence. And if you can remember that, you can build a campaign. Of course, it's a simple campaign, but once you understand the ingredients, you're going to be able to go off and build a more complex campaign just by putting goals and sequences to more goals and sequences, because that's all a campaign really is. So let's get into Infusionsoft and let me show you how to build out a campaign. I just logged into my Infusionsoft application, and in order to build out our campaign, we're going to hover over the Infusionsoft logo. I'm going to go to the Marketing section and down to Campaign Builder and click it one time. Now you'll notice that I already have campaigns in here. You may have an empty library, and that's okay, because I'm going to show you how to build one from scratch. But if you want a campaign template that's already created for you, and you just have to go in and fill in the blanks, there's a white button right here that says Get Campaign Templates. And if you click on that, you can do a search, and you can search for a campaign, a birthday campaign, or a collect new leads campaign. And it will open up campaigns in there, and you can import them right into your Infusionsoft application, like I did here with Icon Collect and Offer Consultation Request number 1424. Those are free, and you can put in as many campaigns as you want to. But even if you're baking a cake, I think it's really, really important to learn how to do it by scratch instead of just buying the box set. This Get Campaigns, temp Get Campaigns template, it's like going down the aisle and picking out those brownies that are boxed already and everything's created for you. We're going to create a campaign from scratch so you'll understand the ingredients and how they fit together. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this green Create a Campaign button, and it's going to open up this pop-up that says, Please Name Your Campaign. And my Judy Miller word of thumb is, name it what makes sense to you. If you're going to be searching for your campaigns, you're going to want to know what they are, so what makes sense to you, and there's going to be get my newsletter, because that makes sense to me. Get my newsletter and more. I'm going to hit save, and when I hit save, Infusionsoft's going to save the name of that campaign. It's going to host the name right on top in the black toolbar. And then it's going to open up my blank canvas, and I get to start from scratch and create my campaign. A campaign begins with, and I hope you're thinking in your head, a goal. So I'm going to come over to the goals in my toolbar to the left, grab the web form, because I said that's what we're going to work on today, and drop it onto my canvas. And when I do, make it a little bigger, and when I do, you'll notice that the blue bar appears on the bottom. And that blue bar, when it, appear, it appears on the bottom of an icon, is just telling you, give me a name. Don't keep me as a generic web form submitted name. Give me a name. So I'm going to name this Newsletter Sign Up. That's it. Name it what it is so it'll be easy to find it at another time if you want to copy it. A goal is connected to a sequence. I hope that you thought that. So I'm going to come up to my sequences, grab a sequence, drop it onto my canvas, and that blue box appears again. And it's just saying, please don't leave it as untitled sequence. Change the name. So I'm going to change this to welcome and more fun stuff. And now I want to connect them. They're not connected. To connect them, you simply hover over the icon to the left. An arrow will appear. Grab the arrow by right or left clicking and move it into your sequence. And there you have it. I'm going to delete the arrow by clicking on it one time. Those little boxes will appear on each end of it. Hit delete, and now I'm going to attach it again. Hover over the icon to the left. Left click on the green arrow. And there you go. Icon to the left, wait for the green arrow, and move it right into the sequence. And now my campaign structure is complete. I have all my ingredients in the bowl. I have my goal. I have my sequence. Awesome. You'll also notice that they're light gray in color, and that means they're in default mode. It means we created the foundation, but we didn't start working on it yet. We didn't go inside and start working on each of the 
icons. So we're going to start with the web form. To start working on the web form, I'm simply going to put my cursor right in the middle of that form, and I'm going to double-click it. And because I chose the web form as my goal, magically the web form is going to open the web form builder. When the web form builder opens, it's just going to be a default web form, and it's going to have the name of my web form right on top in the black toolbar, Newsletter Signup. It's in default mode, and this means that you get to design it. You start in design phase, and you get to design this form. And I'm asking myself, what title do I want to give this form? Hmm, sign up for my newsletter. I'm going to come to Snippets. Title's the second one to the left. I'm going to grab it, place it right on top of the form, and it shows up in Latin, and I'm going to change it to Get My Newsletter. And I'm going to put a couple of exclamation points. Now, because I don't like how close that title is to my first field, I want to put a little bit of space. So I'm going to come to the spacer, drag it below my title, let it go, hit Save, and now I have my title and some space so it looks better. Now I can come in and highlight the title, come to Format and change the color if I want to, for time's sake, I'm not going to do that. And if you'll notice, there's already a first name field and an email field. They both have asterisks, meaning that they're required. If you need their last name, for instance, you may need their first name and their last name. First name is already there. So just put your cursor on top of first name, double click, and this box will automatically pop up. And you can choose last name also. You also have the option to require it or not require it. I'm going to hit Save, and now I have first name, last name, and email. If you come to the field snippet, the tab all the way to the right, you'll see that there's different fields that you can add to this form. You may be a realtor and you need their phone number because you're going to give them a call. Grab phone, drop it where you want it, this is what it's, where it's going to show up inside Infusionsoft, so you don't even have to fuss with that. But if you want to change it from phone 1 and just put phone number, I can require it or not require it, and hit Save. Just be forewarned that even if you put not required, sometimes if somebody sees last name, sometimes if somebody sees phone number, they automatically won't fill out the form because they don't want to give you their last name, because you might look for them on Facebook, and they don't want to get a call at dinner time. So be careful what you ask for. Only ask for the stuff that you definitely, definitely need to start marketing to that person. I just want these people to sign up for my newsletter. I don't need their phone number, so I'm just going to hover over it, hit the trash can, and get rid of that field. There's lots of different fields you can use. If you're going to send them a book in the mail, you can even use the address. If you want to um, let them know, hey, I promise not to spam you, click the checkbox. If you read this, you can put a checkbox. There's lots of different fields that you can use. I'm going to come back to snippets and just show you real quick that you can even add an image to this form if you want to by grabbing image, dropping it on top. And if I was going to do a Facebook ad, I'd probably want my image here. put it in the center, maybe make it a little bigger, and there's my logo. So if I'm going to do a Facebook ad and I want them to know who I am, I definitely put a logo there. If it's going to go on my website, I wouldn't have to have a logo because all the information is on my website. Get my newsletter, first name, last name, email. I put an image here of my logo, and now I'm going to change the Submit button. In order to change the Submit button, you just double-click, and it will open up this box right here. We always recommend that you change the submit from submit, which is very generic, to something else, anything else. So I'm going to say sign up now. Submit is very generic, so make sure you go in and change it. Raise my hand, save me a seat, I want one, tell me more, sign me up. I can change the alignment. If I click on the advanced styling toggle and turn it on, I can even change the background color of my button and make it prettier. I like teal. I can change the font. 
I can change the border and make it thicker if I want to. I'll make it three so you can see what that looks like. I can make the corners rounder or less round, and I can even make it bigger or smaller by toggling on the custom size. When I hit the Save button, you'll see that my button totally changed. I'm going to change it to the middle. Center. And there's my button just like that. So that's how simple I want my form. If I wanted to add some copy to it, I can do that by going into Snippets. But that's pretty simple right there. Get my newsletter. That's all I want them to do. First name, last name, email, sign me up. When you're done creating your form, you're going to come up to the right-hand corner. There's a little draft button. It looks like a zipper. And you just turn it to Ready. You don't have to be scared to turn it to Ready. Ready does not mean it's going to be ready to go off. Ready does not mean it's magically going to appear on your website or it's going to go off to your whole list. Ready is just telling Infusionsoft that you change the form from default to what you want it to look like and it's going to visually change the color on the campaign canvas so you know that you're working on it. You always have the option to come back in here and change it. If I decide I don't want the image, I can always come back and hit the trash can. The next step is to come to the thank you page. We're in design phase, there's a little tab to the left, and we're going to move to the right and click on the thank you page. And the thank you page is your real estate to let the contacts know, yes, a form was successfully filled out. And you would not believe how many times I filled out a form, and I filled it out four or five times because I had no idea if it got filled out or not, it just opened up the form again. So this is your real estate to let your contacts know, thank you, it was filled out right, and here's what to expect. This is the banner that's included. I'm going to delete that banner or get rid of it by double-clicking it, and I'm going to add my own banner. I actually have a banner called Thank You. I'm going to use that one. And I can use my logo if I want to, but I'm going to put the thank you there. And then it says thank you for filling out the form, and it's going to grab their first name. So it will say thanks for filling out the form, Stephen. Thanks for filling out the form, Judy. And you can change it to whatever you want it to say. And I'm going to change this to, you got it. The next sentence says, we will contact you shortly. And you can take notes if you want on this, but what I would recommend is let them know what they're going to be getting. Hey, thanks. You're going to be receiving a welcome email in a few minutes. If you don't receive it, please check your spam folder or your Gmail. They have a way of sneaking in there. That's how I would write it because I have a very whimsical company. But you may have a financial advisor company or a realtor, and you would just say it. You should be receiving an email shortly with some information. Please check your spam folder or your promotions tab if you did not receive this. And that's just letting them know, hey, here's what to expect. Please check your email. And if it does go in spam, we already gave them a pre-header pre on, hey, check that. And then there's a continue. Click here to continue browsing. And this is where you want them to land next. So I'm going to say, go back to my website now. Highlight it. Come up to the toolbar and hit link. And I'm just going to link this to my website. So I'm going to link to www.infusionsoft.com. So we recommend you add your logo or a banner, change the content, and link them somewhere. Hey, check out my blog post, look at my testimonial page, check out my products, whatever, wherever you want to send them, that's where you'll put that. The next tab is your settings tab. The settings tab gives you the ability to be notified every time somebody fills out this form. So if you want to get a bling, 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 bling message saying, Hey, somebody filled out this form, simply put your email address here. If you have more than one person that you want to be notified, put a comma and put their email address after it. There's no limit to how many names you can put there. What's your email going to say? Well, it's going to say a web form was filled out, and you can put for my newsletter. You want to make sure that you change the email subject line because if you have lots of different web forms, you're going to get lots of different notifications. It's also going to give you in that email everything that was filled out in that form. The person's first name, their last name, 
their email address, and if you asked for a phone number and address, that would show up too. This little bot detection, Infusionsoft will automatically bring up a CAPTCHA code if someone fills this form out two times with the same IP address. If you don't want that CAPTCHA to come up the second time they fill it out, just opt out and it won't show up. If you decide that you don't want to be notified because you're getting too many blings on your phone, which would be a great problem to have, simply get rid of your email address in that tab, in that field, and you won't get those notifications. The next tab over from settings to the right is your code tab. And just to let you know, and you may want to write this down, you don't grab the code till you publish your campaign. Again, you don't grab your code till you publish your campaign. If you do grab your code before you publish your campaign, you're going to get that default form we saw at the very beginning with nothing on it except name and email address. Publishing lets Infusionsoft know that you are ready to go. But since we're here, I'm going to show you the code anyway. If you have a webmaster, you have a developer that's going to be working with you, like Roger, you have a developer that's going to be doing your, your web stuff for you, your technical stuff. All you need to do is hit, have your webmaster do it, put his email address here, the message here, hit send email, and that web person will get everything they need to get that website on your web form or get that Facebook ad going, etc. You don't even need them to be in a user inside Infusionsoft. And you don't even need to see the code. You just send it to your webmaster. If you are going to do it yourself, you're going to hit the Do It Yourself button. You can either use a JavaScript snippet or you can use the HTML code. You do the same with both. You copy it all, go into your website, find a text box or an HTML box, and paste this code in that box. The difference between the JavaScript snippet and the HTML code is if I decide to take that picture out of my web form, I don't want it there, I decide I want to delete that picture, and then I republish my campaign. If I'm using the JavaScript snippet, I don't have to go and put the, the code back on my website. It will automatically take on the changes. If I use the HTML code, I decide to get rid of that picture on my web form, I do have to republish the campaign, grab all that code again, and go replace it on my website. Well, Judy, then why wouldn't I just use a JavaScript snippet, snippet every single time? Well, the JavaScript snippet sometimes takes a, a second more to load. And the other thing is that sometimes a JavaScript snippet does not play well, well with your theme that you're using or the web, website platform you're using. The one I was using, it cut off the button. And that's a bad problem to have because people couldn't submit the form. So make sure you test it out first and make sure that that JavaScript snippet works well. Publish your campaign, put your code on your website, republish your website, and see how that form looks because you don't want something not to work. You're always safe with the HTML code because it will look exactly like the form that you created inside Infusionsoft. If you don't have a website yet, you may just be starting out and you're just going to start your own business and you don't really have your website built yet, you can come here and use the hosted version. The hosted version is Infusionsoft holding that form for you and dropping those people into your CRM. It's really cool because you don't need to have a website. You can use this hosted version on a direct mailer, in an email that you're sending out, a link on Facebook, a link on Pinterest, even a link on YouTube. The only difference between this web form URL and this pretty URL is you can change the ending to this one. Hey, get my newsletter. That's the only difference. Then you can copy the same URL and you can even make a, a short link or a bit.ly link if you want to. Share this with your network. This is a little bit of a stinker. The Twitter will send a truncated link to whatever Twitter account that you want to send this to. You may have five different Twitter accounts, but only one is your business. And you can attach it by hitting Edit. Facebook will only go to your Facebook personal page. So if people don't know you by your, your name, they know you by your business name, and you don't want them to go to, into your personal page, then you probably don't want to use this Facebook link. 
you probably just want to come use the hosted version and copy that post on your Facebook business page. Make sure I uncheck that I did. So now we're done with our form. So I'm going to go back to my campaign by hitting Get My Newsletter and More, because that's what I named it. And now you'll see that the web form is light green with gray stripes, meaning, yes, it's in ready mode. I got that one done. When I double-click the form, the form builder opened up. When I double-click the sequence, the sequence builder is going to open up. So I'm going to put my cursor right in the middle, double-click, and here's my sequence builder. And here's where the automation magic happens. You'll notice it starts with a Start button. You don't have to do anything there. It's already green. And that Start button is just secretly whispering in your ear saying, what do you want to happen next? That's what that button's saying. Somebody filled out a form. Now what? If you came to my webinar on Tuesday, we talked a lot about tags. And I let you know that tags are a way we organize our lists. That's one of the ways we use tags. So I want to organize these people. If they filled out my form, I want to know that they belong on my newsletter list. So I'm going to come down to Tags. They're found under Process. Grab the tag. Put it in my sequence. And it's gray. And when you have a gray icon, you double click it, and that builder will open up, and there's our tag builder. I'm going to call this one Newsletter Sign Up. I already have Newsletter List, but I'm going to call this Newsletter Sign Up. I'm actually going to put a July newsletter sign up so that you can see that I'm really not making this up. It's really going to work. I'm going to create this tag on the fly. I don't want to make a category right now. I hit Save, and now my tag is green, meaning it's set up. And anybody that fills out that form will get that tag secretly put on their contact record. Now what do I want to happen? Well, I told the people in the thank you page that when they fill out the form, they're going to get an email really quickly. So I want to send an email. So I'm going to come over to Email, drag it onto my canvas. This arrow will automatically appear, but if it doesn't for some reason, hover over the icon to the left, left-click that arrow, and smoosh it right into that email. The box is blue underneath, meaning change the name, and I'm going to call this Welcome and More. It's gray. I'm sure you know the pattern by now. Gray means you need to double click it. Double click. Email Builder opens up just like that. It opens up in our gallery. If you came to my Email Builder webinar yesterday, we talked about creating templates that you can just add into your campaign. I already created one, so I'm going to come to My Templates, and I'm going to look for my welcome email. There it is right there, use template, and it's going to bring up that email just like that. Thanks for requesting my awesome newsletter. You're now a special VIP member and have access to some wonderful free stuff. So just to make sure you smile, here's a short list of what you can expect. And I just let them know what they can expect. Be on the lookout, the instant marketing team. That's the email I want. So I'm going to come to the right-hand corner, set it as ready, go back to my sequence. Now I have tag, and email number one. Now what do I want it to happen? Well, I want to send them more great stuff. So I'm going to put in a timer because I want to wait a couple days. They're engaged, but I don't want to send two emails at the same time. So I'm going to come to my timer. I'm going to put in the timer right next to the email. The arrow will automatically appear. And I'm going to double click the timer because it's gray and set it up. And I'm going to ask myself, how many days do I want to wait before I want to send them another email? I think I'll wait two days because they're super engaged. If you're a realtor, it might be one day. I'm going to wait two days. I'm going to hit Save. And now I'm going to put in another email. I'm trying to push them to buy my product. So I want to send them some great, great stuff so they think that I'm an expert. I can either come back over to Communications and grab one of these emails. Or I already have the branding done in this one, the welcome and more. So I can right click it, make a duplicate, and move it over. There's no arrow, so I need to add it. I'm sure you're thinking, go to the left, grab the arrow, smoosh it into the email. 
don't want it to have the same name as the first email, so I'm going to double click underneath and call this email two. Double click the email, change the content because you do not want to send the same exact email to that person. Hit ready, back to sequence. Now I want to keep on marketing to them because I want them to buy my product. I'm pushing them closer and closer to it. So I send them an email with some great information, another email with some greater information, and this time I'm going to add my timer, double click, I'm going to wait three days is probably good and hit save, and I'm going to add another email. I can either keep it going to the right or I can move it down underneath the timer, connect it, and now I'm going to be going right to left. So my emails are going to be going this way. Change the name. So it's email number three, offer one. I'm going to double click it. Change the content, put in the offer, set it ready, back to sequence. Another timer, and this time I'm going to give them a break because they're getting an email immediately. Two days later they're getting another email. Three days later they're getting another email. I think I'm going to wait a week. I come to weeks and my timer automatically defaults to one and I hit save. Copy my email. This is going to be offer two. Double click, change my content, make it engaging so they'll want to push on that button and purchase. Set it ready and go back to my sequence. Got to connect them. I'm going to put a delay timer in here and I'm probably going to have one more email. And this is going to be final offer. I want to make sure that this is connected right. There we go. Double click my clock. Wait three days. I think that's good. Make sure my arrows are right. And now here's how it goes. They fill out the form. They get a tag. Email number one. Two days later, email number two. Three days later, email number three with an offer. One week later, offer two. Three days later, final offer. Put in my final offer. I'm just going to set this ready. Grab my template. Set it ready. And I think I'll put another timer here. And if they don't buy, I may wait another week and send out another email, but I don't know what that's going to be yet, undecided. So I want to show you what that looks like if you have some things that aren't, aren't ready inside of your campaign. So I have two things that aren't ready, an email called undecided and a timer. But I want to get this going because I have three days, one week, and three more days before they're even going to get the final offer, so I don't have to have this part done yet. So I'm going to come up to the sequence, set it ready, go back to my campaign, and now you'll see it's green and green, which means they're both in ready mode. I'm going to pause for a second. and I'm back. So we have our goal, we have our sequence, and because I'm pushing them to buy a product, I'm actually going to come and grab another goal. So I have goal, sequence, product purchase goal. I'm going to connect them. Double click my product. I only have one product, so it's any purchase. And now you see the pattern. 
goal sequence that pushes them to a goal. Now I want to publish my campaign. I'm ready to go. Have the first email out. It'll wait two days before they even can buy my product or the six days, so I'm going to publish this. There's a blue button in the right-hand corner. I'm going to hit Publish. When I hit Publish, Infusionsoft is going to check through that campaign and open up a checklist on the right-hand side. The most important part of this checklist is the one on the bottom that says Campaign Passes Functional Inspection. That means that everything that you have set up is going to work as expected. If you have any exclamation points, you need to check those. Elements not marked as ready. Oh, we already know that. If we hit the little arrow, it will tell us undecided and delay timer. Yep, we already knew that. I did that on purpose so you would see those. So we hit publish. Everything looks good. Campaign passes functional inspection. So I hit the publish button and publish that campaign. You don't have to be scared to publish the campaign because you don't have the form connected to anything yet, so it's not going anywhere. You got to get it on your website or send that link out in order for it to even work. When you do publish your campaign, it's going to put you in a different mode. And this mode is called reporting mode. If you want to learn more about that, it will be in the document that I'm sending you, and you can also check it out in our Help Center. So let me show you how to test this out. I'm going to hit Edit, and I'll answer your question in a second. I think it's Gurjana, and I think that what I'm going to explain right now is going to answer your question, so hold tight for a second. My canvas changed to emerald green. Emerald green means you're ready to go, and now I'm going to test it out. To test this out, I'm going to double-click the form. I can either come up to the test button in the black toolbar all the way to the right and just click on my name, or I can open up the code and use the hosted version. I'm going to do that to show you what would happen if you clicked on a link. I'm going to click on that link, and my form is going to open, and I'm going to fill it out. And I'm going to start my name with a G so you can see that I'm telling the truth. So Judy, that's a funny name to spell it and give a whole bunch of R's, and I'm going to give a whole bunch of I's right here so you can see how it works. There's my email address. I hit sign up now, and it's going to grab my name because that's what I typed in the field. If I put Santa Claus, it would say Santa Claus. You got it, Judy. We'll contact you shortly, and if I click go back to my website, it will take me to Infusionsoft.com because that's what I put there. If I go back to my campaigns, you'll see that there's one person in the active contacts, and if I click that, it will be Judy with a G, and it is. Now I want to go look at Judy's contact record, so I'm going to click on her name. It's going to bring me into her contact record, and because she filled out that form, she should have a July newsletter tag. There it is, July newsletter sign up, 7-13-17, so we know that part worked. If we scroll down further, you'll see there's a campaign tab right in the middle, and I'm going to click on that. Recent campaign history. She filled out a form at 1038, Infusionsoft sent her an email at 1038 that said welcome and more, and at 1038 it applied a tag to her contact record that says July newsletter sign up. Awesome! We know it worked. If you scroll down further, you'll see upcoming campaign items. Email 2, email 3, email 4, final offer. So we know that that's going to work. If you want to see what that looks like, you can hit the send button and you can send those out to yourself. Uh-oh, we might have a problem here. We're going to go back into the campaign builder, go back into that sequence, And oh no, we have email number three that gives an offer, email number four that gives an offer, and email number five that gives an offer. What happens if the offer is better each time and they get more of a discount and they already purchased on offer number one? That won't look good if they're getting another offer one week later and another offer three days later. 
Well, Infusionsoft already solves that problem for you, and I'm going to go back out to the campaign. Make it bigger. If you'll notice, the sequence right here has a little blue flag in the left-hand bottom corner. It automatically has that flag. And if you click on that flag, this box will automatically appear. And this box really says, hey, Infusionsoft, if they purchase my product, please take them out of this sequence and move them further on down the funnel. I'm sure you've, you've heard that before. Move people further on down the sales funnel. Move them further on down the funnel. This will stop them immediately if they reach the next goal. So if they buy an email number three, it's going to drop them out and push them further on down the funnel. If they don't buy an email number three, they're going to get email number four with the second offer. If they don't buy an email four with the second offer, they're going to get the final offer. But if on any of those three offers they click on the link and they have a successful purchase, Infusionsoft is going to take them out and they'll never get that second and third offer. It already does it for you with this flag that says stop immediately. It automatically defaults to that. So Judy, why would I ever use run until completed? Let me give you an example. I'm a dog groomer, and I have a five-part video series on how to have a stress-free dog grooming appointment. Anyone that fills out that form is going to get those five videos. If they click on the link to buy a, a free, uh, you know, to pay $2 for their first groom appointment, great, but I still promised them those five videos, and I'm going to give it to them whether they click on the link and purchase my coupon or not. I'm going to deliver what I promised. It always defaults to stop immediately. If you want to change it to, hey, send them everything, you would have to toggle that. It's already set up to the blue flag that says stop this immediately and push them further on down the funnel. Double click. They get email one. Two days later, email two. Automatically, there's no links in there to click. But three days later, they're going to get this offer. And if they purchase, they will never see these other emails. It will automatically take them out. What happens next? Well, after they purchase, I'm going to deliver the coupon or deliver the product. And in this sequence, I'm going to apply the customer tag. And then I'm going to automatically remove, clicked on the tag, I'm going to remove the prospect tag. I don't even know if I have a prospect tag. They get the customer tag, they get the prospect tag taken off, and then they get their first email, which is called Welcome New Customer. I'm going to republish so those show up. There's a method to my madness. And now in this campaign, we have a goal, a sequence, a goal, and another sequence. And now I bet you're thinking, gosh, dang it, Judy, I just created this campaign today. And that's awesome, but I have 22 people that I signed up at an event last week, and they want to get my newsletter and my fun stuff, and maybe want to buy my product too. Do I have to make them go to my website and fill out a form, or is there a way I can just drop them into this campaign? There's a way to drop them into the campaign. Let me show you how. First, let's take a look at our sequences. Welcome and more fun stuff, and deliver product. I'm going to go to my contacts. I'm going to choose the people that I want to drop into the campaign, the 22 people that I may have met at an event, or I may have a saved search, and I can just pick up that saved search. I grab the people that I want to drop into that campaign, come up to the top where it says Actions, click on the arrow going down. Almost all the way to the bottom, there's a Start Stop, Start Stop, Start Stop, and it's the middle one, be, that sandwich between the two Start Stops. Start, Stop, a Campaign Sequence. I'm going to open that up, 
And Infusionsoft is going to say, hey, it looks like you have eight people that you want to put in a campaign. Where do you want to put them? Well, I want them to start in my newsletter campaign. That's the name of the campaign. And I want them to go, oh, there's two different sequences. Well, I want these people to go into the welcome and more fun stuff. If there were five different sequences, five sequences would show up. And when I hit the process action button, Infusionsoft will scoop up those eight people and drop them right into that campaign. If there were three people that purchased and you want to get, you just talked to them on the phone, you can choose those three people and you can start them in the deliver product sequence. And as soon as you hit process action, it will take off the tag prospect, put on the tag customer, and deliver the product. You just have to make sure that your campaign is published before you drop people in, so it's not going to go back and look and go, oops, I got to put these people in. So this is a picture of a campaign. It's a real campaign, and I just want to show you the pieces to it because it's super cool. Now that you know the ingredients, all this campaign is is a goal that goes to a sequence, that goes to another goal, that goes to another sequence, that goes to a goal, that goes to a sequence. Pretty cool. The difference here is there's a little diamond right here, and that's called a decision diamond. That decision diamond will automatically appear when you have one goal that's connected to two sequences. I have one goal here. They paid through a, a different, paid through different name. If they get this tag and it goes to two different sequences, that little decision diamond appears. And when you double click on that decision diamond, it will ask you to set up the rules. And you get to set up the rules and tell Infusionsoft why someone would go to this sequence and why someone would go to this sequence. And if you search in the masterminds, there is a decision diamond webinar in there. Remember this, super, super important. Your simple one campaign is more important than your complex none campaign. Everyone tries to build what's on the right first. They try to put all those pieces together of their whole entire funnel, and they never quite feel confident enough, so they never publish it, and they never get through because they don't have the confidence of everything's going to work. All that's on the right, if you really put it under a magnifying glass, is a goal that goes to a sequence, that goes to a goal, that goes to a sequence. There is a decision diamond in there, and you do have to set it up, but it's very simple, goal, sequence, goal, sequence. It's super important for you to feel comfortable with what's on the left first and know that it's going to work, and you'll be making the campaigns on the right in no time because all it is is a decision diamond where you tell Infusionsoft the rules. If they have this tag and this tag and they're in this zip code, I want them to get this sequence. If they have this tag and this tag and this zip code, I want them to get this sequence. And you get to decide the rules and tell Infusionsoft how to set that up. So my challenge to you is build out a simple campaign. Create that automation with the builder, even if it's just two emails that are going to yourself. Publish it and put yourself in the campaign. Test it out. Get that confidence and see that magic happen, and then start all over again. I always like this to driving a stick shift. When you first start, you back up. You put it in sixth instead of first. You stall. You crunch. You grind. But it's okay because you're going to learn how to do it smoother, and you're going to be able to start making more complex campaigns. But you got to start somewhere. You don't want to start driving the 18-wheeler at the beginning because then you'll get discouraged and you'll stop. It is easy to do once you just get in and build it out. So let's go to questions. My first question is, what if the customer makes a purchase before all the emails are sent from the sequence? If they purchase after email two, will that, per Will that push them into the next stage where they receive the rest of the emails? And I did answer that. It will not. Because of that little flag inside that sequence, it will stop everything else to the left and move people on to the right automatically. So it doesn't look like there's any questions, so I just want to show you a couple of examples. This is a, a guy, his name is Chris Beat Cancer, and he has an Infusionsoft form 
that he created inside of our builder. There's a title, there's a paragraph, first name, email. He also added a decision diamond and wants to know what kind of customer they are. And he made his button a little bit more round, put in the word subscribe, and made it white. That's a form created inside Infusionsoft. He just put the code on the sidebar of his website. Let me show you another one. Trying to open. I'm going to introduce you to my basic training webinars. If you go to YouTube and you search under Infusionsoft Basic Training, my basic training webinars will show up. All the webinars that I've done, I'm going to be sending you the, the link to today's recording. But here's yesterday's send emails. Here's manage contacts. I have all sorts of trainings in here. But if you look at my banner, it says basic training webinars. And if you look to the right, in the bottom corner, it says marketing ideas. And YouTube gives you a place where you can put a link. And that link doesn't have to go to a website. It can go to a hosted Infusionsoft form. And if I click on that link, it's going to open up a form that I created inside of Infusionsoft. Logo, content, title, fields, button, and I changed my background color to teal, and I put in a border of dotted lines. It's a form that's created inside Infusionsoft on a YouTube channel that if somebody goes there and they like it, they can sign up right from there. Don't have to spend money on a website. You can capture leads right from here. I also have this form on Facebook. I can use that specific link, and when someone clicks on it, they can fill out this form. It's part of your Infusionsoft subscription, and you get to use those forms for anything that you need to use it for. And you can start capturing leads. Pretty cool, right? So this is the end of my three-part series. So we had Manage Context Tuesday, Send Emails Wednesday, create a simple campaign on Thursday. I am creating a new webinar that I'm going to be adding to the YouTube channel. It's called Automate Your Workflow, and it's going to show you how to automate your internal processes. And I'm going to have that probably up on Monday. So, you know, join the basic training channel. Just subscribe, and you'll get notification when there's a new email on it. And I thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for the people that came to all three. Thank you for people that come to my webinars every week. And I really appreciate and, and thank you for being an Infusionsoft customer. So I hope you can make a campaign. I hope it, I made it easier for you. Always check out tech support, and you can email me at basictraining at infusionsoft.com if you have any questions. Thank you for joining me, and I hope that this was valuable to you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.